It's amazingly good. He's really good writing about dogs in this, in this case. It's heartbreaking, of course. Uh, that that's how dog people measure their lives. So, uh, and the 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 next thing is uh, one of many. It's I mean there are many many editions, many many different kinds of things this could be. It's 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 Venice and her treasures. Let me see if I can get uh, the title page for you. There we go. Like Hugh Douglas doesn't really have a dust jacket. Uh, it's just it's I think it's from. 80 years ago, it's just a the usual thing, a tour through the highlights of Venice and art, the art collections and the places where you will walk and whatnot. It was actually, upon a, once upon a time, a travel guide. And that's you'd, you'd be foolish to use it now when you can have a, a, a map, on, an app on your phone that's ten times better than any printed book you could ever get. But still, back when it, when it was, uh, you would get Palazzo by Palazzo with, uh, with little bullet histories, little potted histories of what was going on in them. And I think I like this one. I found it at the Brattle, but I think uh, I think I got it and kept it because it was originally bought by its owner in Venice. And you see the, in pencil they even marked Gondola 252. Uh, I just, <laughs> I like I like thinking about the life story that it had before it made its way to me. Uh, and then uh, the last of the Transverse books is a writing book. A book and writing book. There are quite a few on the shelf. They're sort of the next bookcase over is entirely that, and they they sort of uh, bled over into this one. And this is on becoming a novelist by John Gardner, uh, which is uh, it's about that. It's about becoming a novelist, but it's about everything else too. It's about the the life the life of reading and books and whatnot, and writing. But it, uh, he's he's a favorite of mine, and I love reading him on uh, on uh, his his nonfiction. I just love reading. Uh, and then we go to uh, the shelf itself, uh, starting with something that isn't that isn't about uh, books and writing. <laughs> uh, it's this. It's this lovely thing of the Pre-Raphaelites. The Pre-Raphaelites fascinate me, and this this study. Uh, who is this? Uh, it's it's a collection of independent of independent papers by a bunch of scholars. It's not it's not one narrative, but it's Leslie Leslie Paris edited it put out by the Tate Gallery in uh, 1984, and I've kept it even though it's 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 brittle. It's falling apart. It would fall apart if I read it vigorously, uh, just because I like it the most. I like it of all the, the pre-Raphaelite essay collections that I've read. Uh, and then we have uh, this, uh, Certain World by W.H. Auden. This is his commonplace book, which yeah, I don't think it, I don't think an author could get a commonplace book published today. Uh, the whole idea. I mean, I'm sure you know what they are, but maybe some of you, <laughs> maybe some of you not. Maybe, maybe. I mean, it's a, it's an old concept. It isn't really in use today. So maybe, you, maybe some of you who are younger don't. Uh, a com your commonplace book is just where you, your quote book. It's where you you copy down snippets, long and short, of all the things that really struck you while you were reading. And uh, this is Auden's, and it's really good. <laughs> there's there's a uh, fascination on every page. Uh, just tracing what caught his mind. It just it was a fascinating, fascinating prospect. Uh, and then the next thing is something that's very new. We've seen it on this channel. Uh, it's it's My Life with Bob by Pamela Paul, who's the editor of the New York Review of Books. And Bob is Book of Books. It's the, the master list of books that she has read in her lifetime that she keeps and updates constantly. Uh, and the book is uh, Her Adventures with with that master book list. <laughs> it doesn't sound like the, the makings of, of a really great book, but it is. It's a fan, it's fantastic. I loved it. Uh, and then we have uh, James Fenton, The Strength of Poetry. Very nice, understated thing, which is just a, a collection of his periodical pieces, on, on longer pieces on, on the poets that he really likes, Marianne Moore, Philip Larkin, that... that uh, and he's he's endlessly good to read on them. He's like Helen Vendler, you just can't go wrong reading him on on, on uh, poetry. So uh, it it was it would ordinarily be in the next bookcase the one that's devoted to writing on to books on writing and reading, but there are too many. <laughs> I love those books so much that I get I I, I end up keeping a lot of them, and, and there's too many for that bookcase. Uh, the next one is uh, writing and reading memoir. It's uh, in friendly candor 
This is by Ed Weeks, who was uh, forever and ever the editor of the Atlantic Monthly. Uh, a, a fantastic, a fantastic guy. A fantastic, funny, whimsical, opinionated guy. Uh, this is a just an incredible book, an incredible memoir. Uh, that's also doubles as a collection of occasional pieces. Uh, that are just they're collected here. Uh, that are that are really good. There wasn't a subject that he could turn his pen to that he wasn't that he wasn't readable on. Uh, he, in fact, one of my favorite essays in that collection isn't literary. It's it's his his essay on Cape Cod, on the people who go to Cape Cod and, and love it. It's just wonderful. Uh, I mean, it's something we've seen on this channel before. This is Art and Ardor by Cynthia Osik. I had the paperback. It's a, another collection of it's of her occasional pieces on literary scholarship and whatnot. And I had the paperback in crappy condition forever and ever, and then I got this hardcover uh, to swap it out right uh, right here in the room. Uh, and then, okay, there's a slight theme building here, but I promise it's not going to be everybody. This is Park Street Papers by the great Bliss Perry, who was also the editor of the Atlantic Monthly. Uh, that's, I don't think I have any other Atlantic editors on this show. Uh, this is a much older work uh, with of his reminiscences about, uh, I, I could walk you right by there if you come to Boston, um, his reminiscences about their, their odd, quirky, circular window little offices and the adventures that he had with the great titans of American literature back in the beginning of the Atlantic Monthly, back in its, its first golden age. Um, <laughs> this thing uh, I found at the Brattle and I couldn't resist getting it. It's, uh, it's the, the essentials of book reviewing. <laughs> It's from uh, 30 or 40 years ago, and it's just a collection of essays by a whole bunch of people on the do's and don'ts of book reviewing, how you do it, what your responsibilities are, that sort of thing. And it's it, it's a wonderful uh, collection of pieces that isn't what reading means to me, how important reading is to the general public, that sort of thing. It isn't that. It's, it's a, a whole collection about the actual nuts and bolts of book reviewing. Uh, so I, well, I pull it down all the time and reread it. Uh, and then uh, more occasional prose. This is more uh, a big volume of Saul Bellow's collected uh, book reviews and book essays and literary addresses and whatnot. There is simply too much to think about is the title uh, that it was given. <laughs> I was not consulted. Uh, and then another thing, this is also uh, similar. Uh, it's literary occasions. You know how uh, book reviewers will do You know your book review your ordinary book review, so-and-so writes a new book, you, you write an 850-page review of it. And then they'll also do longer works, a reconsideration of Kafka, a reconsideration of John Dos Passos. Some book reviewers do. Some, your, <laughs> your humble servant does not. But some of them do, and some of them are quite good at it. The stuff you see in, in the New Yorker or in book forum that isn't a book review. Uh, and a lot of that is collected here. The story about the story. This is famous writers writing on famous writers. And uh, the, a lot of the stuff that you find in here, it's difficult to find elsewhere. It's a good volume in that it collects stuff you want to find. Uh, so you have Camus on Melville, you have uh, Walt Stegner on John Steinbeck, uh, Oscar Wilde's book on uh, Pater. Uh, uh, You've Randall Jarrell, Philip Rose, Cecil Milos, Jeff Dyer, D.H. Lawrence, James Wood. A whole bunch of people. Cynthia Ozick is in here the same thing as we just saw in Art and Art. And it's another, uh, the, the litmus test of a collection like this is how often you would go to it. And I, I pull it down all the time to reread what Virginia Woolf had to say on so-and-so. Uh, and then another reading book. <laughs> I promise we're getting to the end, though. This is Bob Alter's book, uh, The Pleasures of Reading in an Ideological Age. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's not... Uh, really a collection of his occasional pieces. Instead, it's just him grousing. <laughs> but he's a very good grouser. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's a, it, and it's a, really a love song to reading. It's just, it's a grouchy one. <laughs> and then the last two books we'll do don't have anything to do with book reviews or collected book reviews or book reading. <laughs> They're just two books. <laughs> uh, the first one is uh, this, this thin, heavily illustrated edition of Ivanhoe. Uh, Sir Walter Scott's Ivanhoe, which has uh, spot illustrations all throughout. Uh, I don't know why, but it just appealed to me. Uh, I'm, I, I just like it. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Walter Scott, and he doesn't have big fans anymore, so I got I got this and uh, love reading it. 
that the last time I read Ivanhoe, I read I read it in that volume. And then the last one is something I think we've seen on this channel before. This is Father Raymond Brown. This is the birth of the Messiah in, in just a just a, a hardcover. His his book on uh, studying the nativity narratives of the Gospels. Uh, and does does a fantastic job, and I, I I'm always impressed by that. He believes that they are true. He's a believing Catholic, who writes great biblical scholarship anyway. And I, I the, my pr proof that that can be done and that it's really readable. So I, if those of you who are interested, I highly recommend his book, The Birth of the Messiah, and also his much bigger book, his two volume work, The Death of the Messiah. Uh, and everything else he did. He did an introduction to the New Testament that is must-reading. Just fantastically good. Uh, and there you have it. That's it. That is the third bookshelf, bookshelf number three, of the, the, the thin West Wall bookcase. So if this wasn't too tedious, we'll move on to the next one uh, next time. Uh, and until then, I'll, I'll see you later. Thank you, BookTube.